and welcome to of the second series of the Wisdom Factory. I'm Mark Davenport. My usual partner, Heidi Hernlein, is out of town this week, and so I'm winging it alone with the help of my friends. Uh, and one of those friends is now going to start the show with a musical selection. This is Scott Marshall, our artist in residence and guinea pig for tonight. Uh, he'll be singing his song, The Fisherman. Hello, everybody. Here we go. Fisherman and his rocket wife. She had an accent and a pair of eyes. He loved her like she was from the sun. She had all creation on the tip of her tongue. Oh, baby, you'll be my girl. Oh, maybe, believe it or not. Believe it or not Fishing out on a big canoe Think about women all day Think about them and their wonderful names I say those days Those Days now, oh, baby, you'll be my girl now. Oh, thank you. Thank right. you. Uh, that was nice. Very nice. Thank you. And musical artist and from his bottom third there that you can see what he's got to present at scottmarshallart.com. That's right. <laughs> yes. And we are supported... Uh, this evening by our friend in the middle there, uh, Margarita Crystal Lotus, who has done many, many shows with us over the past year. And in my rather, rather virginal condition of being brand new to running a show myself, she is graciously uh, backing up our efforts technically. And she is also a healer and may well have things to say or questions to ask. Hello, Margarita. Hello, everyone. I'm so delighted to support you today, and I'm also very happy to meet your guests. And, of course, our, our featured guest for the evening is Lawrence Gold. And Lawrence is a particularly interesting fellow who whose efforts at healing and getting to the root of people's problems, of learning how to just uh, speak straight, professionally, and clearly to what ails us when we talk to him, and uh, is here tonight. And I believe he'll be taking us through a, a procedure with uh, Scott. Uh, hello, Lawrence. Hello there, Mark, and everybody. Hello. Well, you, you've... Go ahead. Hi, Scott. Hey. <laughs> you've kind of presented me in a way that might be construed as some sort of medical practitioner, whereas really what I am is an educator. 
Mm -hmm. And what's on our menu for tonight is a procedure called the Gold Key Release, which mm -hmm. is one of the procedures of what I've come to call Intelligent Empowerment 101. And what it does is guides people through the interior landscape, the underpinnings by which we perceive our experience in life and the underpinnings which shape our responses. So my work is really guiding people in their inner landscape so that they can get their hands back on the controls of their own lives rather than something I do to people. It also happens that in my clinical work there's a hands-on facet, but that's only for the sake of guiding a person through their internal process. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you just for a moment, Lawrence while we tell people a tad about ourselves and something about the mechanics of the show for our listeners. Uh, it is our pleasure to share the wisdom of our guests that, uh, that we invite here and the gifts of those who also participate. Uh, it, it is what we factor. It's not my wisdom, though I'm pretty bright, <laughs> it's the wisdom of the guests that we present. And we're really, we feel extremely privileged and honored to be able to help them spread the word about what they're doing. And we do this every Wednesday uh, at this time, and we have several more lined up in this series. Uh, guests, you should know that you're welcome to make comments uh, over on the side comment stream, and Margarita will be monitoring that. If you have questions, please hear from us. Okay, so now on to the, to the business of the show. <clears throat> Lawrence, would you like to uh, introduce a new plan to do Mar today? Our Let's signals see. a little spotty. You asked uh, if I'm ready to introduce... The game yes. plan for our show? Uh, the, the, yes, what is the game plan for the show, okay. your presentation? Great. As far as my presentation goes, I'll be introducing a procedure called the Gold Key Release, which operates along the lines I said a bit earlier. Then I'll be inviting some feedback from Mark, who's got some experience with it, so that we can get another perspective. Then I'll be explaining the procedure itself and guiding Scott through it. And then afterwards we'll have time for more conversation. Okay, wonderful. Great. So, oh, there's a question here from Margarita. Yeah, we, were, we have a lot of people here. Sherry Lee, Cole McDonald. Uh, Sol Anita, uh, Briuta Toker, Jennifer Nash, Maria Mendola, uh, John Cleese, and uh, Sharon Malden, Anna Colley, Claudia Arso, and Colin Colan says, excited to hear from Lawrence Gold today, <laughs> and Jeremy Mercy and Manesh Shabra, I hope I pronounced it correct. Cindy Fleming uh, Alton is here, Irene Stannis, um, and that's all. that's all. Thank you. Oh, that's a great turnout. That's wonderful to hear. And I'm sure there are many more people listening who haven't commented, of course, too, so, or announced themselves. Okay. Thank you, Margarita. Back to you, Lawrence. Okay. So are we ready? <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I think I'll start off with the origins and nature of the gold key release itself. The origins trace back to a time when I was looking in myself at what was the underpinnings or structure of certain stucknesses in certain areas of life. And as I pursued the root of it in myself, I discovered certain features. And those features have to do with four basic aspects of existence that everybody and every living thing shares, which are four functions or four 
operating principles. They're very familiar to everybody. They're attention, intention, memory, and imagination. Those four create the sense of substantiality of our experience in life and of our self-identity. Those four underlie our internal life, our relations with others, and our relations with the objective world. In order to have any kind of experience, you've got to be able to put your attention on it. You've got to have some sort of intention toward it or it would have no significance or even uh, feel to you. You would have to have some sort of memory in order to be able to recognize it at all. And you have to have the ability to take it in. And the process of taking in our life experience always involves the emergence of unknown new experience into our experience. So the words you're hearing me saying are coming in from an unknown place as far as you're concerned. You don't know what's coming next. And if truth be known, I don't know what's coming next either. None of us knows our next thought. It all emerges from an unknown into us. And so that fourth aspect I named as imagination could be termed emergence. Those four give the sense of substance to our experience. Now, I started tracking it down in myself, and I discovered that if I followed a certain series of steps, maneuvers of my own attention, I could sufficiently encompass the sense of the solidity of my own experience, at which point it would start to soften up, and then I could get it, if I wanted to, to dissolve completely, and it would put me into a state which was the underpinning state of our experience, which is a transcendental but ordinary condition. Now, lest anybody get caught in these words, don't worry, because the experience we're going to have today will show how in just completely familiar all of that is to us, and then everyone will have, if they follow along as I guide you all, or as I guide Scott, you'll be um, able to have the experience in yourself of that path from being embedded and kind of fixated in experience to falling into or bringing yourself into or liberating yourself into a free condition that is the space in which new experience can be started. Again, don't bother being concerned with the words. This will all be very familiar once we get started. Now, before I go any further, I want to uh, open for any feedback from anybody, kind of questions that would help clarify for you what I've just said, because I'd like to have people feel clear the entire process through. Okay. So I'm going to. Yes. Mark and I will moderate jointly here. Marguerite, I saw raised her hand, so yeah. I'm listening. So uh, we have Jeremy uh, Murphy here, and uh, he loved the musical Start. And then we have Nancy Ann Steely, and she says, um, "I excited to hear more about your work, Lawrence Gold, and his work with semantics and exploring our inner landscape." Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott, did you have any questions uh, before we start? Well, uh, um, I have uh, more of a comment. I think that it's going to be. I'm I'm so interested in what this will do for us or for myself. So I'm I'm kind of like a, a open-minded guy who is interested in um, experiencing what he's talking about. So Lawrence has kind of set the stage for us. So I'm I'm just ready to go. Okay. Okay. Well, that that's why we invited you because you're yeah. open-minded, Scott. Yeah. We like open-minded. Yeah. <laughs> or something. <laughs> Okay, I've given you some general introduction to this, very general. Be, be useful at this moment if uh, Mark has anything to say any from his own experience. This would be a way of setting some more of the stage for what we're going to experience. 
if you have anything. Oh, I think. Weeks ago, it was our first contact with uh, with you and your procedures, and uh, uh, I found uh, remarkable uh, consequences uh, virtually immediately. Uh, in a few minutes' time, uh, things had changed, and these things have, by and large, remained changed, which is just uh, really uh, fantastic, you know. I threw out the medicine cabinet. <laughs> I don't need that for the pain in my ankle or in my knee or in my back. You know, those things. This this is the real gross body effects that, that I came to experience quite quickly. And I'm most grateful for it. And then later on, we, we experience, started beginning... Uh, to to look at the deeper problems, personality problems, long-term attitudes, and uh, things that have been uh, obstacles uh, to 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 my my progress into a full, complete, happy person, and uh, it just happens. The thing is, it seems um, uh, as if uh, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't work on my logical mind. I, I have to leave that mind over to the side because it's just no help in, in this process. And, uh, and by that, I don't mean there's no logic to what happens, but it's just an experience, and the body experiences it. The, the, the mind changes, and so the body changes, and, well, that's, that's what I've gotten out of it so far. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'd like to help with the part about the mind not being able to grasp this because actually we can grasp it. Now I'm going to make sense of the physical changes first. We tend to accumulate memory patterns through experience which show up as patterns of readiness to respond or react to certain kinds of situations we've experienced in the past. And that state of readiness is always a rise of tension in us. As in the words, on your mark, get set, go. With each of those three words, a person gets a little more keyed up until that go comes and then the person fires off into action. It happens that it applies to all life experience, such as, say, doing... Uh, an online show where you know that the show is about to start and people start getting keyed up, right? <laughs> People may not tend to get a little more laid back and kind of relax. They tend to get keyed up. Mm -hmm. In the case of physical pains, a large percentage are nothing more than high states of tension in the muscular system triggered by the accumulated memory patterns of a lifetime. And that may show up as back pain. That typically goes with being keyed up for an experience or it may be the aftermath of an injury situation where a person hurt themselves and went into a cringe response. Mm -hmm. And that cringe response, if it increases tension over time, as so often it does, can become painful. It's rooted in memory. That one of the four that I mentioned at the very beginning. We have attention, intention, memory, and imagination. In this case, memory and intention are linked together so that the person is keyed up. They're mm. held tense in a certain way. When a person dissolves the grip of the memory pattern that's been running the show, the intentionality starts to ease off too, and the physical tensions that go with the intentionality relax, and the pains that came from the tension disappear. We're working with the underpinnings of experience, memory, intention, attention, and imagination, or emergence, being those four. Mm -hmm. Now, this is all very hypothetical to a person who's had no experience of it, and that will change quickly as we get into this, because it will become, instead of hypothetical, experiential. Mm -hmm. Now, it also applies to all kinds of responses to experience as I alluded to about how people get heat up, say, for a television, radio, or internet show. 
They call it stage fright. <laughs> and what it is, is just a person being really keyed up and wanting to control the situation in a way that turns out the way they would feel most comfortable. All that taps right back into our memory of how things have gone in the past, our imagining of how we'd like it to go, the intention that is our push to have it go that way, and the attention that we're putting into the situation and onto ourselves. Now, I know that these are relatively deep ideas and that they may just glance off the surface the way a stone skips across the surface of a lake when thrown at a sufficiently high speed. So it will be useful to review this broadcast and take, if you want to go deeper, a little more time to feel how what I've just said sinks in. Mm -hmm. For the purposes of our show today, I invite everyone to select some area in their life, in your life, that you would like you, to you change. You broke up, Lawrence. Can you repeat that last night? Sure. For the purposes of this call, I invite everyone to okay. choose some aspect of your experience, some memory where you feel stuck and you'd like to have it come free and have greater freedom, greater spontaneity, greater creativity available to you. That way the experience will be meaningful and useful to you. And the way we'll do this will probably be quite adequate for everybody, not just the ones who are on the inside of the show on camera and on microphone. Mm -hmm. Again, let's take a break and open up for any questions or comments before we move forward. Yeah. I've got one, Mark. I can, I, I'm uh, going through in my life right now a transition. So pretty soon my job is going, the job that I'm currently at is going to end. So there's um, you know, some tension, as you can imagine, for me to find a new job, to get an interview, to do this. And um, I'm kind of like excited that I get to be a part of this show because maybe there's other people out there um, that are going through a similar thing in their life or something like, um, or they've lost their job already or something, I don't know, something like this where there's life events that are even maybe not necessarily buried, but there might be things buried that cause stress and tension. And so I'm just excited to be a part of this, um, this gold key technique. Okay, Scott, that should yeah. work well tonight, I think. Yeah. Uh, Margarita, hey. before we get started, do you have anything? Yeah, uh, we have some uh, uh, from the audience. Uh, John Greenstein says that the video audio is quite poor. Uh, oh. can't help if moderators shut off their video when they're not speaking, he says. And we have, uh, I have a personal question there too for you, for you Lawrence, and that is, uh, what does projections in the mind has to do with this? I think it has something to do with we project something that we can, we fear. Is, am I correct about that? That's one aspect. Projections are always memories. Thank you. And we'll be able to experience, instead of a hypothetical answer or a theoretical answer and a hypothetical question, the experience will actually answer that kind of question. So what Scott chose was a quite suitable topic to work with. It could be a situation as he described. It could be a physical pain that someone has. It could be a relationship issue. It could be a chronic emotional state. In other words, anything you can put your attention on. Mm -hmm. The juicier, the better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm trying to look for a way to turn off my video, and I'm having a little problem up at the top of the screen. But that may increase, if we can do that, that may increase the quality. Maybe if Margarita and I... 
some people say that they can hear us loud and clear, so it might be on uh, on the other listeners' side too. I see you a little fl flickery too here, but I've seen mm. you a couple times. Yeah, mm. audio can is most cuts off when Mark is talking. So maybe Mark, if you can mute your video. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Up at the top of the screen, it's not. Sh you know, I, I understand where those figures should be, but uh, there's not. So. It's the video camera on the top there. Yeah. The top. Don't click on that red telephone. <laughs> I, I know what I'm looking for, but they're not there. I'm sorry. We'll just proceed. Okay. Ah, technology. <laughs> okay, go ahead, uh, Lawrence, I guess, if we're ready. Okay, so the first thing is we want to have everyone have selected the item that they want to pass through the gold key release. And we know Mark has it. And I'm going to wait for a go-ahead from Margarita before I start us into the procedure. Yes. Um, I think, um, yeah, it's good. Uh, Mark has turned off his video, so go ahead. Okay, here we go. First step is I want to have you have a direct experience of the differences and similarities of memory and imagination. This is just a preparatory step, so we'll do it this way. I'm going to say, remember something complete what you're doing, imagine something, complete what you're doing. And I'll do that a number of cycles, and then I'll check back in with everyone. And once we've got that underway, then I can take us through the gold key release. Okay. So are we ready? Yes. Yes. Okay, here we go. So, and by the way, it doesn't matter what the nature is of the item you choose to remember or imagine. It makes no difference. You're just okay. using the functions of memory and imagination. So here we go. Remember something. Good. Complete what you're doing. Now imagine something. and complete what you're doing. Remember something. Complete what you're doing. Imagine something. Complete what you're doing. Remember something. And complete what you're doing. Imagine something. And complete what you're doing. Okay, let's check in. Yeah, it was amazing um, that I was able to imagine um, very, very clearly. And there was a different, I noticed there was a little different quality to my memory of something and then how I imagined it. It was just a little bit different. Very close, though. Mm -hmm. Margarita, any feedback on this? I, I was astounded by like the imagery came up in my mind I, I, I when you said imagine there was a fox that came out here uh, the other day and so I saw the fox walking around in my living room and then he said complete and it disappeared <laughs> and I looked at my cup here and so I used that as a cue to actually stop and finish that memory that it was very interesting thank you so much did you notice similarities and differences between memory and imagination? No. 
Scott. Not at all. Really? They're, to you, they were the same? It was the same. It's the same quality as a memory or I, it's something I never have experienced. It was the same in, in this instance. Okay. And Scott? Yeah, the, to, to be clear about what I said earlier, it was, it was almost as if my memory, I could feel there was more of a, uh, a kind of a presence to it or a, in my body than in my imagination. I imagined, a, I imagined a beach, and it was different than my memory of being in a subway in New York City. So it was a, a bodily difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in general, memory is more tangible, has more solidity, and imagination is more ephemeral or evanescent, tending to vanish. Mm. That's the general, that's a generality about those two. But you'll notice they're on the same bandwidth. Right. Okay. Uh, Margarita, anybody from public commenting on that? Well, there ha nobody has commented yet on there. Uh, okay. Imagination seems to be just as clear as memory, Elaine Frey. Uh, mm -hmm. Colin Gowland says there is close relationship between my memory and the next imagination section. Uh, Manesh says I could see some little difference between memory and imagination. Memory was on the left, imagination was on the upper hand of the brain. Mm -hmm. And Ryuta says my imagination was the opposite of my memory. And Garesh says more emotional depth to remembering than imagination for me and Jeremy Murphy says very interesting closure on bad memory it seemed like closing a door sealing it off almost seemed like it was gone very helpful and Nancy Ann says I remember the worst case scenario with memory then with imagination I saw a fuller picture of other options that I could emerge if I took more space to follow that thread. Very interesting, right? Okay. So the intention of this preparatory step was to get people ex deliberately remembering and deliberately imagining. We're going to be using those faculties in the gold key release. Okay. So, Scott, are you ready? I'm ready, okay. <clears throat> okay. So, Put your attention on the item you selected. Notice where you feel it bodily. Notice its size and shape by feel. Notice its intensity. and complete what you're doing. Now notice the intensity of the intention you have toward it, about it, and in it. And complete what you're doing. Notice how it all matters. Complete what you're doing. Notice how it mattering involves you. and complete what you're doing. Think to yourself, it's true, it's true. It's untrue, it's untrue, it's untrue. And complete what you're doing. Notice how feeling it's true involves remembering. Complete what you're doing. Notice how feeling it's untrue 
involves remembering. Complete what you're doing. Notice how remembering involves imagining. Stop imagining. Let it dissolve and dissipate. Awaken. Is it more, less, the same, or gone? It is definitely less. Okay. Take what's left. Notice where you feel it in you. Notice its location, its size and shape, its intensity. Complete what you're doing. Notice the intensity of your intention toward it, about it, and in it. Complete what you're doing. Notice how it all matters. Notice how it mattering involves you. Complete what you're doing. Think to yourself, it's true, it's true, it's untrue, it's untrue, it's untrue. Complete what you're doing. Notice how feeling it's true involves remembering. Complete what you're doing. Notice how feeling it's untrue involves remembering. Complete what you're doing. Notice how remembering involves imagining. Stop imagining. Let it dissolve and dissipate. Awaken. Is it more, less, the same, or gone? It's gone. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you know, the uh, when you did it the second time, Lawrence, um, mm -hmm. I felt um, just as, as soon as we started uh, a dissipation feeling, I don't know how else to describe it, like an ice cube melting. Mm -hmm. um, and that and then kind of like a like a spreading of mm -hmm. of the feeling and then it was that was the end of it the second time through mhm mm amazing yeah so we have our hands on the controls of attention that's recalling the item and mm -hmm. locating it in you mm -hmm. intention the intensity of your intention right also, how it all matters and how it involves me or you. Right. And then how that involves remembering. There's the memory. And then imagining. Yeah. See? 
So as you described it, yeah, you get your hands, you get your yourself back into where the origin is. Yeah. All of a sudden, starts to soften up. Yeah, it was like a bubble burst. It was like a um, as soon as you said stop imagining, there was a quality to my mind that would want to keep going with that, you know, with that particular. Uh, stress that I was having, my stressor, my mind wanted to keep that being there. But when, as soon as I, after you went through the process, and you said stop imagining, there was a whole different bodily feel inside. Mm -hmm. a, a, a great difference, a great lessening, and then a, a like a complete eliminating of that particular stress that I was feeling. Mm -hmm. okay. Gee, that was easy, huh? <laughs> Golly G. <gee. laughs> Mark? I heard him laughing a little bit. I, I guess I'm clear here. Uh, you, you can hear me, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I had a difficult time remembering what the but the thing I was working on by the time we were done, I had to really go back and dig for it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, well, that's not the first time that's happened, however. So I, I wasn't all that surprised or, or, or worried about it. I thought, oh, that's good. That's, that's fine. That, that, that is happening. Uh, and uh, it's, that's how it works. That's, that's it working. You know, it's quite okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. I should comment a little on that because you brought up an important point, which is, how do we know when we're done with it? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, either you can't remember what it was, or you can remember, but it has so little substance that it's like smoke, and yeah. it has no charge or substance to it any longer. Right. Now, the typical thing to look for as an aftermath is that the, your response to the situation is spontaneously different when it happens again later. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you will find yourself responding autom just spontaneously in a new way that's more aligned to the way you would intend it to be. Mm -hmm. That's one of the possible items. The other is that you may experience a period between now and then, in the next hour or hours or days, couple, day or so, that I call burn off. Mm -hmm. And that is that the situation may come up with greater intensity to you, and you may feel completely helpless in the midst of it, and then shortly thereafter, it completely dissipates. Right. Just so you know that burn off is one of the possibilities for this. But in general, it's as I say, you have a spontaneous new freedom in that situation. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. So as, as Mark said, the changes for him were durable. Yeah, look for your own experience to tell you whether what I'm presenting to you is just a parlor trick or whether <laughs> it's actually shifting the underpinning structure of your life experience. Right. I will do that. <laughs> uh, Margarita, cool. anything from your end? Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Murphy says it was a very powerful technique to reprogram our, our brain. Impressive, he says. And for me, when I, when I did it, it's like uh, I related to Mark because you know you want to hold it together and so that you can taste the badness of it like you want to suffer more and more and more and then I realized that yeah that's the precise thing that really need to be uh, removed so that you do it like that very nice and and mm -hmm. I realized of course uh, being a healer myself here uh, this is what what healing is to, to dissociate this um, the emotional part of an event. I mean, there's always these emotions, and then usually when you when I unhook the emotions to it, just sever it, 
and then it's just like looking at a photograph with, with no response inside. It's like a 3D uh, image. You can see it, but it doesn't do any kind of uh, pain inside or uncomfortability or any kind of thing. Oh, yeah, that happened there. And, 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 they, and the one is neutral to it. Mm -hmm. There's another useful distinction to be made about this, which is the word dissociation. The typical attempts people make to deal with a situation consist of either action in life or trying to suppress, deny, or avoid the feeling, which goes by the term dissociation. It doesn't work. This procedure takes you into it at the little pivot points that keep it hooked. So you have to go into it first, find the little hookies, reclaim your voluntariness, and as soon as you do that, then you can back out of it. Then you can stop imagining, allow it to dissolve and dissipate and awaken. So it's a two-directional thing. Go into it and then come out of it. Anybody in public have comments along these lines? Or, Scott, do you have something? Not yet. Not well, yet. Okay. I could comment on it. I, I think I, I can only imagine what it would be like to have a life where you now have this, this tool in your toolbox where you can go, like, as soon as, as soon as, or, you know, at the end of your day, even, you can do a kind of a scan and do this, do this gold key technique. So I, what's tremendous for me was the addition of now finish what you're doing. I like that part. Mm -hmm. So there's a part of me that seems like it always wants to go and go. Maybe that's, you know, that's uh, my ideas I have about my memories or ideas I have about my life that they want to now be done with it, you know. Now be finished. <laughs> finish mm -hmm. what you're doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Completion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a common, how do I put this exactly? It's a common plight of people that they have trouble starting things or carrying them through or completing them and moving on. Right, right. And this right. enables a person to recover all three of those and to yeah. streamline our own process. Right. It's different than saying, like, let go, which is um, an idea I might have about how to do something. Mm -hmm. Saying, now be done with it is different because it's uh, it just it, 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 uh, interacted with me in a very good way. I, just, mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay. Mark, how are we on time? We are about... Yeah, we have about 10 minutes left in, the, in our presentation. So uh, we, we, we might want to talk about what's behind this magic. You know, what's the theoretical uh, well, business? It's this not magic, but an actual technology, which is what our theme is for this second series, the technology mm -hmm. of... Uh, Okay. Well, without getting too terribly technical about this, it gets back to those four facets, attention, intention, memory, and imagination. And those four facets exist in all sentient beings, all life forms. That means down to the virus and as large as you can go. In terms of living beings, the, the most primitive form of memory is the DNA. That's a memory structure that perpetuates the species and allows us to heal when injured. Attention shows up as broke all up. of the senses. Yeah. So all of our senses exist in service to attention, which is directing the senses. When you're listening, you're tuning your hearing to what you're listening to. When you're looking, you're aiming your eyes. 
when you're smelling, you take a breath in order deliberately to smell and put your attention on the aroma. Mm -hmm. And life itself is an ongoing process of emergence, mm -hmm. all the way from the notion of evolution to the most ordinary, mundane experience of driving down the street and watching the traffic around you. Mm -hmm. It's all intake. Eros is a name for that, that income. It's the attraction that things have to our attention. Mm -hmm. So the thought stream that everybody experiences, you may notice, it captivates us. We seem to be hooked into yeah. thinking. So there's an yeah. erotic quality to thought, just mm -hmm. as there's an erotic, erotic quality to the relation between the gender of our choice and ourselves. <laughs> Had to be politically corrected there. <laughs> we have some comments, and uh, yeah. Elaine Frey says that uh, this could be pivotal for me as I'm as I experience continuous depersonalization. I don't really know what that is. And then Nancy Ann says I can identify with how easy it is to keep busy, active, and not having a pause to go to in this con conscious space to allow such a simple process to move things through. I've been learning to have patience to stay with the burn off and stay connected with the new options showing up through my imagination that support my longer term goals. Mm -hmm. Uh, she raised an important point, which I call presence of, well, they call it mindfulness or presence of mind. Right. And that is when we get into a pickle in life, the tendency is either to struggle through action or to try to manage our feelings. Right. If we have enough presence of mind. Instead, we can run the gold key release on an area of life that's troublesome to us. As soon as we notice, oh, yeah, this kind of thing keeps on happening. Mm -hmm. This kind of emotion keeps coming up. Mm -hmm. Just recognizing, by George, you know, I could run a gold key release on this. <laughs> it includes, by the way, the sense of impatience. You can run gold key release on patience. Yeah. You can run it on presence of mind. I bet you could run it on, on uh, any mental process, maybe. Sure. Like Mental, for example, physical, if, you, emotional. if you want to, you know, cling on to your happy time that you had the other day, and you're, you know, you know, getting lost in in uh, in, in something like that, then keying into it might be beneficial. Sure, you can use it on both desirable experiences and undesirable ones. Desirable mm -hmm. ones because, as the Buddha pointed out, attachment yeah. leads to suffering. Yeah. There's yep. nothing wrong with desire. The problem is being stuck, stuck in, in a state of desire. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is the first of a number of procedures, some of which are extremely major, powerful, that can be used for deep-seated stuff or for stuff we just don't know how to handle. I've made mention of that elsewhere. One of them is called the middle way memory matrix ritual. Mm. It's a much longer, much deeper, way powerful process. This is powerful. That was like gigantic powerful. Mm -hmm. And I'm bringing it up because the gold key release is the necessary preparatory learning. Mm -hmm. It's how we learn the path from being embedded or stuck in experience to having it dissolve and falling into our natural state, original face free condition, mm -hmm. spontaneous right action. When we've mm -hmm. trod that path enough and it's familiar, then we're equipped to do these more, how, uh, more high power processes. Right. Okay. Can I mention a comment here from uh, Jeremy? Mm -hmm. um, he, she says, uh, Nancy Ann, multitasking is a big obstacle for me. Feel like I'm not productive if I'm not doing it. But like mm -hmm. Lawrence Gold said, live in the present and be mindful. That helps navigate around the constant desire to multitask. 
if we multitask too much, we're not really present, are we? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you a secret about the being present and the so-called now. What people call the now is not the now. It's memory. Our yeah. ability to recognize our environment, our situation, is all memory-based. Now is formless. Now has no location, no content, no features whatsoever. If you can identify a feature, run a gold key release on it because it's not nowness, it's memory. Mm. Laced with intention, fixating attention, and captivating us in the inward flow. If you really want to come free, dissolve your notion of what now is. Because there ain't no such animal. <laughs> there is no experience of nowness. That's uh, liberating. Mm -hmm. To understand that and to feel it. Yes. Uh, I have come the most close to something like what I understand to be the causal using. Uh, We lost you there. Oh, can't you hear me? Using. You got close to the causal. That's what I heard. Oh. oh. As far as I understand it, closer to that now, that nothing now, than mm -hmm. ever before. And uh, I have been working at this for some time, and I'm, I'm very grateful for So uh, you're breaking up there, uh, Mark. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, and then we can get this other comment in here, and from Elaine Frey. How can we get more detailed guidance for using this process? What do you say, Lawrence? Perfect. Well, there happens to be a blog page I've created for the Gold Key release, which contains recorded coaching. That you can use, you can start the recording and stop at each step, do the step, and restart the recording. It's also written out, and it also links to the more advanced procedures, which, uh, though freely available, I don't think you'll find it fruitful until you've gotten familiar with Gold Key Release to the point where you can run it by yourself without coaching. Mm -hmm. Then you'll know that the groove is groovy and you can go into the more powerful procedures, right? There's one of them which is uh, called the Vajra Self-Correction Procedure, which is extremely concise, very powerful, and it's a backdoor technique to dissolving the grip of the mind stream and habitual experience. It's like a three-step process, but you've got to have the actual process in your pocket. You've got to have gone through it so that you have a feel for where you're going, not just a thought. That makes sense. And I will make that link to that available through this uh, Hangout. I think I need uh, assistance to find the location that the public people, the audience, can get it, can see it. If you post the, the link in the chat box, the top left corner in, inside of the Hangout, and you type it down there, I can put it on the web page. All right, let me do that then. And in the meantime, I'm thinking that uh, this is an amazing technique that you've shared here, Lawrence, and it reminds me of some of the Buddhist practice, really, uh, some of them that are similar to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this fulfills huge numbers of injunctions in Buddhism. For instance, and there's a saying a that the more you try to find it, the further you get from it. <laughs> that gets dealt with in the Vajra self-correction technique. Right. Let's see. I'm still not... Uh, I've got... I, I set up the comment tracker. Is that... Oh, no, no. Wrong one. No, okay. The chat inside there it. we go. I'm new to this. Here it is by George. There it is. 
Okay, we see it. Good. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. I would like so, to go around with everybody for some final remarks, and I'm going to start with one of mine that I'm very grateful for you to be having been here today, Lawrence, uh, because I didn't have hardly anything to do <laughs> with, with your taking charge of the session and leading people through it. Um, it's, it's been wonderful. Uh, I do have, after everybody else sp speaks uh, a final word, I do have some announcements to make. But uh, I'll pass it. Okay. Um, we have a comment here from Nancy Ann, and so she says, now for me, is coming back to the present moment or situation to be present to what is arising from all of our faculties, which we are awake, we notice in the constant flux, it seems to challenge us to live with more spontaneity to sustain the changes we face. Mm. I don't think you'll find any trouble sustaining it, frankly. But as I said, time mm -hmm. will tell the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Well, that's been my experience. Sustaining uh, just happens, yes. That's great. Any, any final words? Scott? Oh, sure. Sure, I'll give a. I just wanted to say um, it's it's a. We have so many ideas about our lives, our inner world, and to have to be to be able to be a part of a process where you can um, work with actual underpinnings, as you put it, Lawrence, of your life is just, it seems to be a real important thing that we, you know, more, should get more out into the world. And um, I'm certainly going to use this in my life and look at your blog there and go deeper once I feel like I fully got the gold key part down. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, it was, it was really wonderful to be a part of this, so thank you very much. A lot of Thank gratitude you. toward you and Mark and Margarita for having me on the show. Great. Thank you. You said something that is close to my heart about getting Thank it out you. in the world. Mm. That is that once you've mastered this yourself, I invite you to teach people yourself, people you know personally. Mm. If they're obviously they're receptive, they got a wanna. But <laughs> this is something I would like to see go viral. I think we can make if this were to go explosively viral we could make some changes in stuck world situations that are very unpleasant that people are struggling with handling. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you all. This and I have one more thing since there's good. nothing from elsewhere, which is that, as I said, this is the first, the leading edge learning technique to learn how to do this kind of maneuver. There are others much more powerful. And at some point, I expect to be doing formal training or a coursework curriculum applying these, guiding people through different facets of their experience. Mm -hmm. uh, probably be something like a weekly hangout under mm -hmm. the name Intelligent Empowerment 101. Mm -hmm. And just uh, so that if you, know, you see an announcement go by, you'll know what that one was about. Okay. It's best for people to try to reach you on a website or email or whatever. No? Well, I think email is certainly, I check email, so that would be one way of getting to me. The address would be hereness, H E R E N E S S. Hearness at somatics, that's S is in Sam, O, M is in Max, A, T is in Tom, ICS dot com. Also, if you visit my blog, uh, according to the link I provided, then uh, you'll be able to comment on blog entries and I'll be able to see that. Okay. Okay. And you know, on Facebook and Twitter and all the rest of that rigmarole. <laughs> my, my website is somatics.com. And Somatic. at every page of the website, there's a clickable email link and a phone number. 
And phone number. Phone. And a phone <laughs> number. You use phone? I do. <laughs> My mother told me about phone. phones. Yeah. All right. All right. And Scott, uh, we know we we can see what you've got at the at uh, yes. what is it? Scott Marshall's. Scott Marshall. Art. Com. Yeah, Scott Marshall Art. Com. Right there. Right, <laughs> right under the beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and Margarita, what's, what's the best way to find you? Is it the crystallotus.com? Yes. That's crystallotus.com. I notice it has two L's in the middle. Crystal. Lotus.com. Exactly, the crystallotus.com, or you can ping me on Google Plus, plus Margarita Crystal Lotus. Awesome. Okay, and of course, you, we invite everybody to look at our <coughs> Wisdom Factory community. We're, uh, we're expanding quickly now, and we would be delighted to have people join the community. That, that's on Google Plus, of course. Okay? So you can find us elsewhere too, on Facebook, for example. Okay. So if we are done, then I just want to note that you know that next week we continue the technology theme, a kind of outer technology, with Dr. Robin Wood of Thrivability fame. I, some of you may have heard of him, so it may be a new name to some of one who is looking very, very deeply at what it takes to get past sustainability, which is better than what we have, but past the sustainability to thriveability. And we'll see you next week, same time. Okay. So goodbye, everybody. I do believe. Okay. Bye-bye there. Bye. All right.